back to the Pro Series Podcast. This is episode 136, and today's guest is Matt Ashton. Matt is the founder and CEO of GPRS. I kind of joke about it in the podcast, but GPRS is a company that is, in my words, the CIA of the construction world. They get to do utility locating, uh, video pipe inspection, 3D laser scans, leak detection, all this cool spy gear, in my words. Uh, in the construction world. So if you're in the project manager or you're a designer and you do jobs from all around the country, this is a cool episode for you to listen to. They do some stuff that is crazy in technology. Um, so check out their website first at GPRS and then head over and listen to this podcast. But before you like and listen to this podca podcast, please like, subscribe, and review this podcast on wherever you listen to podcasts. And now I hope you enjoy episode 136 with Matt Ashton. Matt, thank you so much for hopping on the Pro Series podcast. I uh, can't wait to talk to you about your business and how you kind of got into it. Um, but first, I kind of want to get into how we usually, we kind of met each other. I know we met through Irene, someone that you work with. Um, and I always like the guests that she brings on because it's just, it, it fits into the interior design industry. Um, but always like, it kind of gets me out of that interior design bubble and just hearing about all this stuff all the time. So I'm really, really excited about your stuff. I went on your website and I'm kind of calling you like the, the construction spy because like everything you do is the coolest thing in the world. And I can't wait to talk more about it, but I kind of want to get into um, us uh, hearing a little bit about your business and how you kind of got into it. Yeah. Well, thanks, Eric. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. And uh I, you know, this was not a vision for me, you know, when I was going through college, I went to college for, uh, you know, I had my, my degrees in finance and my first job out of school, I was working as a financial analyst for a large you know, tier one automotive supplier here in the, in the Toledo area where I, where I live. And um, I realized pretty quickly that I did not want to work in a big company, that, 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 mm big corporate environment just wasn't for me. And you know, ever since I was a small child, you know, my, my dad had his own business. He had a business where they would cut and drill through concrete. And there was, I would help on those jobs through high school and college. And one thing that I saw consistently is if they were going to cut in concrete, it was likely they were gonna cut through electrical, especially mm -hmm. if it was a slab on grade uh, it just seemed inevitable that, okay, there's a trench laid out. They're going to cut a 40-foot trench you know, to tie into a sanitary line. Uh, it, like, okay, where's, where's the electrical conduit that, that's, that's in the path of this cut? Because it just seemed every job I was on, you know, there was going to be uh, an issue like that. So uh, I was a little frustrated in my in my job just working with the, the big company it was not what I thought it was going to be I talked to my dad about going into business with him and he said you know Matt I really think you should do something on your own and when he did that he gave me you know, this, this magazine and in the magazine was an advertisement for this company in New Hampshire geophysical survey systems and they build these ground penetrating radar hmm. machines and one of the applications they listed was finding electrical conduits prior to saw cutting. And that aha moment kind of went off. I could go to my dad's customer base to help them find electrical prior to uh, cutting or drilling on a concrete slab. And that was kind of the, the singular you know, value proposition that I, that I had when, when GPRS started. But you know, since then, you know, we've we've gone into you know, far more applications than, than than just finding electrical prior to, to saw cutting. That's still a that's still a key piece of what we do. But you know, there it is dwarfed by uh, you know, more significant pieces of our business now. So when it came to like up like scaling your business and making it bigger, and bigger, and bring on these services, what made you want to bring on these different services? Because I see there's um. Uh, different uh, services that you have on your website, you know, the 3D scanning, the virtual tours, the drones. What made you bring on those type of things? I, I mean, I, I see a lot of these companies in your in your world kind of just kind of stick to the landscaping stuff. 
but you kind of broadened it and kind of, you're kind of doing it all. So yeah, we want to integrate, it really, it, it, there's, a, there's a few answers to your question. And I guess I'd start with, you know, we want to give our, our customers, when they, when they hire us to help mm -hmm. them on, on one of their projects, we want to give the most complete information that's possible. So when I started the company back in 2001, you know, it was GPRS stands for a ground penetrating radar systems. And that's really all we brought was I had a couple different antennas, one for concrete, one for underground, and we would use ground penetrating radar to help them identify you know, items within concrete, whether it be electrical or reinforcing steel and the same thing underground, whether it be utilities, whether it be underground storage tanks, but as the company grew, it, we realized that, hey, we're, there's still, we, we can't find everything with, with just radar. So we added on the handheld electromagnetic utility locators that a lot of the one call you know, companies will use. And then later, you know, as the company grew, we, we saw opportunities and we started acquiring a few other uh, companies around the, around the country. And one of them had video pipe inspection where they can run a camera through a sewer system to do an inspection of the quality of the inside of that pipe, and also to determine if any directional drilling has taken place and gone through the mm -hmm. pipe unbeknownst to you know, whoever that asset belongs to. So uh, we got into that in 2011 uh, with a, a friend of mine, we started a company doing 3D laser scanning. And I was more focused in, in GPRS was much smaller at the time. So I really didn't put any time into the laser scanning side of the business, but years later, we really thought about bringing those two companies together. So we, we I, GPRS wound up acquiring a hundred percent of the, of the laser scanning business. So imagine in an architecture or engineering, you know, GPRS provides a very good picture of what the underground looks like. And then when we can bring in a 3d laser scanner and yeah, basically build reference points and they'll put a 3D model together, integrating our underground findings with a point cloud showing all of the all of the features within any any space, regardless of how complex it is. It adds a lot of value to uh, the, the, the total project information that's shared among the architect and the engineer and the owner and all the contractors working on that site to bring that vision into a reality. Oh yeah, and that that side of the business I was so interested in because um, a lot of these like commercial jobs that um, I was a part of in my past, usually the the designers or the engineers or the architects aren't always in that area of the the country where that builds going on. So having those three scans and those walkthroughs is genius to have for those people that are you know stuck in the cubicle all day, kind of doing the design work for it all. But beyond that, like think of you know, facility managers. I mean, there's oh yeah, whether it be data centers or distribution centers, where you may have one person sitting in one city, but he has a network of data centers or distribution centers around the country that he's responsible for. And instead of him having to go vi physically visit and, and and check on, you, what if he had a model that showed, you know, that, that, that three dimensional, you know. A, like a BIM model for, for, for that for that facility. And then what if it integrated everything underground, you know, with every, everything that they that they can they can physically see. And it it just it it, it saves trips and it, it it puts people on the same page. It, oh, yeah. Some of that uh, ambiguity around you know existing conditions it goes away mm -hmm. know, when, it's all, when it's all layered together. And to have this on file for that building's lifespan is amazing. So when they go down the road of uh, renovations years gone, uh, years past or years in the future, they can actually know how it was built, what's there, what they can't do. It's just a genius thing to just do when you're starting out the construction. So th that's, that's, that's one of the reasons that we're, I don't want to skip too far ahead of your questioning, but um, one of the things that we're, we're excited about now is, you know, you think about why we exist. 
a lot of these facilities, you know, I would say where, where we do, a, where we see a lot of repeat work is at universities, you know, hospitals, even ma manufacturing you know, facilities. There's a, a lot, a lot of times we'll see this very frequently that they're going through these renovation phases or they're, they're adding on or they're, they're, they're changing, you know, part of their, their facility on, on, on site. It's not, I wouldn't say never, but it's rare that we see any of these, these campuses that have good records of what their underground infrastructure looks like. Yeah. So we came up with this idea a few years ago. You know, what if we could build you know, permanent records you know, for, for these facilities? So instead of having these 24 by 36 prints stacked six feet high in the engineering office, the facility office. Yeah. What if we could integrate electrical and gas and communications and water and sewer and steam, you know, put it all on and, and not as it was designed or as it was intended, but it, what, what the existing infrastructure really looks like on these campuses. And as they go through these renovation phases, you know, they've got, some record of what's really there. So we, we the concept that we're calling it, we, we, so this product is called SiteMap. And we integrate those, those technologies that we bring together uh, to create what we kind of generically refer to it as the Google Maps of underground infrastructure, where you can really have a, a good understanding of what the underground infrastructure on that site looks like. That's so cool. I mean, I'm just thinking in my area right now, they're, they're wiring for a uh, 10 G. So all the ground ripped up and they're, you know, putting all the wiring and think about how much money they could have saved if they had this years ago and they know where everything is and they didn't have to, they don't have to bring you. I mean, no matter what they're hiring a company like you to figure out what's going on, but going into the future and if they have to do 20g or whatever they know where everything is and that would be such a cool thing like the google earth part of it would be so cool we have the technology to document what we're doing today but we're not doing it we're we're, we're not using the technology that we have available at our fingertips right now when i, when I say we i mean the the industry as a whole mm. yeah it has not fully adopted the services that GPRS provides yet to document the course of construction. I mean, think about, so we set steel or we set concrete and then everything gets put in the wall. Well, soon those walls are covered up and we don't know, you know where the risers are exactly in the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, if we were to come in with the laser and document all that, we would have a perfect model of where everything is within the within the skeleton within the frame of that building, uh, you know, to be used years or even decades down down the road as, as changes are being contemplated. But yeah, that's a huge thing. Is most of your clientele is it commercial use or is it some residential use as well? Very little residential. Most most of it's, it's commercial construction. Um, gotcha. So we 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 started in Toledo, Ohio, and. Uh, that was just kind of a natural, we kind of just gravitated towards, I mean, that's where I saw that initial need mm -hmm. was in that very specific application of concrete cutting. Uh, so yeah, we, we kind of went towards commercial construction and now we're talking to architecture and engineering firms on, on a more frequent basis, but the majority of our, if we look at the, the work that we do probably 90 to 95 percent of it is general electrical and mechanical contractors do you think at some point you're going to go to uh, municipalities and townships and stuff and trying to pass that because i feel like that would be for urban planning uh purposes that's a, this is a huge tool right yeah not not even just municipalities but think about the utilities themselves a lot of these utilities they don't have a full a record of, of, you know, where all of their assets are, you know, you know, throughout the, throughout their network. That's true. Yeah. I mean, there's so many times that, you know, you're building a, you know, a patio or drilling for a pool and stuff and you call the power company or the gas company and they have no idea where that 
any of their pipes are or their wiring or whatever it is. It's, it's, it's funny, we were working at a university and uh, they, they want us to do a full campus scan. They, 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 they want this site map where they, to bring everything together because they've had these repeated problems. And they said, well, hey, here's a new parking lot. We know where everything is here. So why don't you guys start here and show us, you know, and then we can kind of compare your results to what we know, because this is, this is all you know, relatively new. So yeah, sure enough, we, we say, hey, don't even show us what you have, but let us just kind of put, put the puzzle together on our own. And it didn't match up. And so then, no, we, we, we know that goes here. I, well, it doesn't, <laughs> but uh, for some reason, things changed during, during, the, during the course of construction and not all of those changes that happened over the course of construction were documented under the plans that are provided to the owner. Yeah, I mean, that happens in all, all construction. There's no way you could document right. it all. So are you saying like, when's a good time for a company to have you come out and do the scans? Really depends on on the on the application. Um, you know, one thing we haven't talked about, but leak detection. I mean, oh, yeah. You you said you're in the Pittsburgh area, so you've got a, a lot of old infrastructure in in the Pittsburgh area. And if you look at I mean, just go up and down the east the East Coast, a lot of these old cities, yeah, the the amount of water that we're losing. Uh, through our, our our water infrastructure is enormous. So, uh, you know, for preventative purposes, whether it be you know, a municipality or whether it be uh, a plant or university hospital, whatever, we can help to identify those leaks at at any point in time. So, generally, I would say uh, for the past twenty years, we normally get called prior to concrete cutting or drilling. Or prior to some type of excavation. But now we're seeing that shift where instead of just being related to damage prevention, it's for more informational purposes, where we, we just want to know what our undergrowth, we understand you've been here enough, you've worked on our campus enough, we, we fully understand that we don't have a good picture of what our underground infrastructure looks like on our campus. And we want you to put together these site maps for us, so you know we have a better understanding of what we truly have uh, underground in our, on our campus. Yeah, I mean that's such a a thing that you kind of don't even think about when you're in a you're in an area that has good water and everything. You don't really think about the leakage, and you think about the leakage in your home, but you don't really think about the leakage that the pipes that are feeding your home or your communities at all and it's expensive yeah and yeah. what happens when water leaks it, it it creates these voids and when we create voids yeah, we can a sinkhole can open up and then then we have then we have a safety issue on our hands so yeah it, it's these problems just compound if they're not addressed over time yeah well, when did you bring in the drone imagery stuff uh, that was with another one of our acquisitions. So we, we're always trying to, we have, we have a, a saying within our company called widen the gap. So okay. we've, we've, we've built a considerable gap between us and other companies that provide you know, services like ours. Um, and so we're always trying to think ahead, you know, what, what could we do? What are our customers going to want from us you know, seven or eight years from now? And how can we be more efficient? How can we provide better quality data? What can we do to provide a better deliverable or a model to our, our customer? And uh, you know, so we do some of these jobs where you know, we may be on site for months. In, in some cases, we've been on site for over a year at a time. So we've got these large areas and we want to stitch them all together. The drone makes, makes perfect sense to you know, bring in and, and, and you know, pull all those findings together and you know, show it on a overhead plan view of what uh, infrastructure, where infrastructure is located on that, on that facility. Yeah. I and mean, it's amazing all the services that you guys do. And 
that's kind of why I kind of said that the spies of the construction world, because what of you're, you're looking through and it's just kind of the coolest thing in the world. And it's kind of cool to hear how you built your company. And did I read that right? That you, you went from uh, one person to over 800 people? Employees? Yeah, we're, we're close to 800 people. Wow. I, I, I started it in September of 2001 and I was the only, only person in the, in the company. Um, hired a friend of mine out of college, you know, about a year later after I started it. And just that we've been really blessed with the, the quality of the people that we've been able to bring in. Mm. And when you, when you put a great team together, and then you kind of get out of their way and let them do their thing. You know, great, great things happen. And we've just been tremendously blessed by the, the team that we've been able to assemble. You know, so we're based in Toledo, uh, but we have people in 54 cities throughout the United States, really every major you know, metropolitan uh, area, every, every major population center. Uh, we, we, have, we have people based there to provide this service in that area. That's awesome. And I liked what you said there. I've interviewed a lot of entrepreneurs and they, their biggest struggle is growing the company. Um, and I've asked people like my followers before, like, what's your biggest question for these entrepreneurs? And it's always growth wise. And what you said there is you hire the people that are good for the job and you kind of let them go and you kind of, you kind of trust them pretty much. And I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, they they kind of want their hands and everything and they can't give up any type of uh, work in it. And they don't let, and that kind of holds them back for the growth period. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, I'm no micromanager. Nobody will ever accuse me of, of being a micromanager. Now we've had that. That's, that also leads to some tough conversations, right? Where yeah. if someone does need, you know, more daily supervision, it, it, it just, it becomes apparent that they're not a fit. Well, we're doing the company no good and we're not doing them any good by, by keeping them on the team. So the best thing we can do for them is tell them it's time to go find, you know, whatever it is that they're supposed to be doing, but because this is not it. You know, the first, the first six or eight people that, that I hired in GPRS, the closest I was to any of them was probably 120 miles. Toledo to Cleveland. So we were all spread out. Yeah, you know, like our first, I'll try to get this right. I think our first, we'll call it six spots in the country were Toledo, Cleveland, Chicago, Orlando, DC, and Phoenix. Wow. <laughs> so geez, you're all over the place. That that our it wasn't uh it, I don't think it was super intentional back when we started expanding, but it's it served the company well. Where instead of you know, focusing on building depth in any one market, we really expanded our footprint wide. Mm -hmm. So before we had multiple people working in any city, we were always thinking, okay, so we're in DC. Let's get down to Charlotte. We're in Charlotte. Let's get to Atlanta. Yeah, we're in Orlando. Let's get let's get to Miami, Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio. Yeah, same thing up and down the West Coast. Yeah, then fill in the gaps. Yeah, you know, Denver, Kansas City. Yeah, that was just the way it worked. That's interesting that you did it that way, and it obviously worked for you because you'd think you'd you'd kind of conquer one city and then start to spread out, and that's usually how most companies do it. But obviously, you know you're almost 800 employees and you're all over the place. It's, it's awesome that you were able to grow like that. Yeah. About 500 of those 800 are you know, in the, in the field, you know, our, our, our field services team, uh, you know, providing the services for, for our customers on a daily basis. That's awesome. What advice would you have for anybody that is an entrepreneur or maybe it's something that you had told yourself when you were starting that you've learned now? It, it's so um, a few things. Uh, the one thing I say is that, that we are we are so much more capable than what we realize. Uh, I question every single day for the first five years 
of, of this business if it was going to be viable long term. And, and but it just had to keep plugging away. And so most people quit when things get hard. And you've got to find a way to plow through that adversity. I just ran on, on Saturday, I just ran my, my first half marathon. My, my son's awesome. 21 years old. And uh, he told me he was going to run this half marathon in Chicago. So he goes to school there. So uh, I said, well, you know what, Trevor, would, I, would, you, would you mind if I ran it with you? And uh, he beat me by almost a half hour. <laughs> But I had trained for this, and about nine and a half miles in, it started getting really hard. And yeah, my my legs were cramping badly, and it, it was just this this mental game where this 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 really, this is really hard. And I know I'm struggling. I I can I know I'm slowing down, but. I am not going to quit. I am going to, you know, do whatever I can to get across that finish line. And it takes me longer than I expected. So be it. But uh, that's just the mentality that you know, starting the business and growing the business has uh, kind of seeped into other areas of my life. And uh, if you can find a way to just plow through adversity and, and deal with it, uh, head on that that that's the that that separates I think a successful entrepreneur from one who's on the brink of success but just has to find a way to get through that adversity that's great advice I think mental is such a it's one of those aspects that people always take out of it and um, you know everybody always thinks connections and all that other stuff so I think it's that that's a great the marathon thing is such a timely um, yeah. good comparison to being an entrepreneur and that I love that whole perspective of it um, I do really really appreciate Matt you coming on to the podcast and I I loved our conversations and I feel like we could even dive into even more on these um, topics but I want to finish up on where people could find you on uh, your, your website your social media is LinkedIn whatever you want to promote no, thank, thank you. Uh, our, our website, if you Google GPRS, we'll, we'll likely come up, but the website is GPRSINC.com, uh, GPRSincorporated.com. Uh, and then LinkedIn, the same thing. If you find, just search GPRS, uh, you know, we're, we're all over LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, me personally, Matt Aston, uh, my last name is spelled A-S-T-O-N, so M-A-T-T-A-S-T-O-N. Awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much again for hopping on the, the Pro Series podcast. Can't wait to get this out and let's stay in touch. Eric, I really appreciate it and I enjoy the conversation as well. Thank you for what you're doing to help bring awareness you know, throughout the architecture and engineering industry. I, I, I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem at all.